Thanks, Lucy. Uh, superbly better, Dean. Well done. Um, far from a guy playing in his penultimate test match, you, you look like someone with a point to prove <laughs> out there today. I don't think it's a point to prove, Ken. I just want to still contribute. Um, I want to go, obviously, out with a bang, and I want to try and win a test match and a series. That's ultimately the standard I've set myself for, for the series. Um, so there's no turning back now. And at the end of the day, I don't have anything to lose, really. Whether I fail or not, it's still coming to an end. But, um, yeah, I guess it's obviously up to me to, to get those performances in for us and try and get the side into a winning position and, and ultimately tr still try and keep the, keep the trophy at home. Um, yeah, so I don't really think it's a, the, there's a point to prove. I've just got a standard for myself that I want to try and uphold. Yeah, Dean. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. When you're bowling and fielding, you think that this wicket is the best one. You like the wicket like this. When we, you're batting, ball is jumping around, stopping a bit, <coughs> coming fast. So it's a tough time to bat on. What would you like to say about today's inning? Uh, maybe sitting here now, I can actually say it's. I think it's a quite quite a good wicket. I think if there was uh, more sun on it, it might have been a little bit tougher. Um, but yeah, it's obviously the conditions are in the favour of, of, of the bowlers, naturally because of the, the overhead conditions and obviously the, the green, the greenness of the wicket. Yeah, just uh, things just went my way, really. Um, it could have been another batter on another day. Um, so yeah, just happy to, to happy to be contributing once again. Definitely, yeah. I've still, still got unfinished business tomorrow. Hopefully I can kick on and uh, try and do what I did today. Um, I might be waking up a little bit sore tomorrow. I haven't, haven't battered that long and with the intensity, obviously, that the Indian bowlers brought. So, yeah, but I'll worry about that tomorrow. Great, Stu. Uh, Dean, that was probably among the more fluent innings of your test career. I don't know if you agree or not, but um, just take us into your mindset and, and, and the intent with, with which you sought to play because it wasn't all just about trying to survive. Yeah, I think um, your mindset has to be one of looking to score. Um, still compiling it with defence and leaving the ball well. So you still have to back your defence and, and leave the ball. That's obviously not a, not a threat to you. The, the ball's moving around a bit and uh, Ashwell Prince is going to hate me saying this, but th there is one with your name on it, no doubt. Um, one ball can just jag back, hit your stumps, hit your pad. You can nick it if it straightens. But um, we spoke about it yesterday, and it, it's definitely a wicket where you have to have that mindset of looking to score. Um, I think when you look to score, you just get into better positions as well. And you can capitalise maybe on a ball that's over-pitched or maybe it just sits up off the back of a length to, to play a different shot. Um, so, yeah, I just think it's the whole mindset that I, that I took in. And it's obviously I had to get through the lunch uh, two lunch period, and then after lunch I came out with a little bit more of a positive mindset, got into really good positions, um, yeah, and capitalised on some, on some, uh, on some balls that maybe in back in the day I didn't really capitalise too much on. But uh, in saying that, today was my day, and things things went according to plan. Um, and yeah, we we're still in a really good position as as a side. Miles, Dean, um, there's obviously a bit of talk about the future of this side now as well. Um, so how satisfying was it also to share productive partnerships with two guys who are considered part of the future, yeah. and Tony and David? And um, specifically, what did you make of David singing's on debut? Yeah, I think that partnership with myself and Tony was, was pretty important there. The ball's going around. Boomer was swinging it both ways. Um, and Tony, did, I thought he did bloody well to get through it. I know he only got 20-odd, 20, 20 but I think... <clears throat> given, given the period of uh, seeing off that newish ball to get it old uh, to allow maybe a guy like uh, David to come in and play his natural game was, was maybe some things that won't be spoken about, but I'll mention it. Um, yeah, and then Betters, look, Betters, you would think he's this youngster coming into test cricket. He's, I think he's 28 or 29 now. He's got a lot of experience in the first class game. He's done well in South Africa and he's done well in county conditions as well where it's, it's not the easiest club that he played for in, in Durham. Uh, wicket's not really conducive for uh, free scoring players, but you can see the guys coming in with a lot of confidence and he played like today, like I thought he's got a, maybe 20 tests on his belt. Um, it wasn't easy at all. 
Um, but you can see he's calm. He's got the experience of, of playing um, long, long format cricket. And he's also been someone that I've played against a lot in South Africa as well before he went overseas. Um, so yeah, yeah I, thought he, I thought he really took to it pretty well. Talbot? Um, Dean, those two partnerships, um, clearly you're the senior man in those partnerships. And I'm just wondering, you, 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 there's a management kind of responsibility from, from your side. How does that differ when somebody is new to uh, test cricket as Tony and, and David with all his experience? Do you, do you, were there different ways of managing them as partners in, in those two stands? I think you need to be pretty consistent. Um, you still have to implement the basics of batting, um, especially when the ball's going around a bit. So you need to almost simplify, simplify your game plan, but have a good mindset of looking to score. Um, no, I didn't, didn't manage either of them any different. Um, just still a pretty straightforward message. You should know me by now. Um, pretty straightforward out there. But also the bigger picture of making them aware of we get through these guys, we get through these two, they got two more bowlers and then we can try and capitalise on that as well. So yeah, it was pretty generic out there with both of them. Um, but also Tony is also an experienced player now. Well, not in test cricket per se, but in first class cricket. And he's had a really good uh, run of late. And you can see that the way he's, he's pretty chilled and composed and nice and calm at the crease, uh, equally with betters as well. Um, so yeah, no, I can't say that the management was any different. Um, it was still one of those communication, get through it kind of vibes. And then try and capitalize on the ball that's, that's, that's in your area, uh, that, that obviously prefers your eye. Um, so yeah, it was, it was nice to see those two young guys um, do pretty well in um, tough conditions as well. Could we'll just do a follow-up on Talbot. Um, and your celebration at when you got to 100, um, I thought you were going to pull something, but um, but it, it um, pulled something long ago. <laughs> <laughs> but it seemed to be about more than just scoring runs. Was it was it about more than that? And and what was it about? If it it's was a special <laughs> special game for me. I don't have a Test hundred at uh, Centurion. Um, that's the one that's that's the one that's got away throughout my whole career. And we spoke about it the other day in the Titans change room. They were like, geez, I thought you've got a few. I said, no, I don't. I've been rubbish here. Well, maybe not too rubbish, but don't have a test 100. And I think it was more for that. My family's here. Um, my friends were here uh, watching, knowing that this is my last international f uh, fixture that I'll play here. So I think it was a whole combination of that. It was um, one of... Happy to be be on the board. I'm now in all the test venues in South Africa, which is which is kind of cool. Part of a pretty decent list. Um, and then obviously it was to just show appreciation to my family and friends for being here. Okay, at the back. Hi, this is Sunil from ITV India. Telford just dropped me off my question, but I'll take it forward. The first at the final series is usually very important, emotionally charged. Are you still emotionally charged? Is it the flashback is going in front of you, or you? You're letting the emotions just not seep it in and just in the zone right now. For me, at the moment now, it's about contributing, uh, putting our team in a, in a good position, uh, influencing where I can. Uh, I think by the time Cape Town's finished, maybe reality will be a little bit uh, more real for me, but I think I'll be on a wine farm somewhere drinking copious amounts of wine. Um, and then I'll maybe sit back and enjoy what's, what's happened in the past. Um, but for me now, it's all about business. Um, I want to come in and, <laughs> and do things like I've done today and, and uh, obviously carry that mantle forward for the younger guys to know what the standard's about. Cool, we're going to take last three questions. One, two, three. Yeah, Dean, uh, do you think that uh, knowing that there was no Mohammed Shami and uh, Prasid Krishna is playing his first test match, Shardul Thakur plays on and off, uh, the, he only plays overseas, so there was the perfect opportunity that there are two bowlers you could capitalize on because Bumrah and Shiraj are regularly playing and probably a notch above the other two. Did that work when, uh, when you were uh, tactically thinking about how to build the innings? Not at all. Look, I said the other day, I'm glad Shami's not here because he keeps you busy at the crease. He's uh, extremely um, uh, experienced and talented bowler. I've played against him for many years now. So I was actually glad when uh, I heard he, he wasn't coming. Um, but in saying that, test cricket's test cricket, and uh, I'm pretty sure the Indian bowlers, are set, uh, they set themselves their own standards, and I'm pretty sure the young guys want to come in and, and make a play. 
um, just knowing that there might be a, a hole coming or a void of, of, of maybe older players not being there and they have to step up and, and fulfill that role. So I don't think it was a tactic at all. I think it was just a pure case of seeing the ball. I don't think I would have played any different if, uh, if uh, Shami was here or not. Um, yeah, it's just one of those days, honestly. And I wish I had a few more of those in the past. I would have come out swinging a lot harder. Great, we're going to look to wrap with Sophia. Um, Keen, uh, we've got we've seen two Ironmen sort of setting up there in the back. We also know that this is a big pitch that's up and down as it, as the weather comes. We obviously want as much as we can, but what is it realistic uh, that you need going into that uh, <laughs> third quarter? Yeah, I think uh, just purely based on the overhead conditions, the wicket might hold its uh, hold its own for a little bit longer. Usually, when the sun's out, yeah, it does create the dryness and it does present the up and down movement of the ball. Um, so I think the moisture is still in the pitch and it should hold a little bit longer. Um, look, yeah, yeah, first uh, first innings runs here yeah, are so important yeah, because you don't want to be chasing anything more than what you should be. Um, realistically and um, in a perfect scenario, another, if we can get a 350 um, and beyond that, I think that would be awesome for us. Um, our bowlers proved that we can take the wickets on this on this pitch, um, be that they are ex inexperienced, and, and that's fine, but they did still do a proper job um, in the first innings. So I'm sure the confidence is up from their point of view. Um, so yeah, anything, a 350 moving, up, moving on, maybe even to 400, who knows? Um, one of our lower order batters come off as well, which, uh, which they're very likely to. Um, so yeah, that would be that would be the perfect scenario for us. But we know Test cricket doesn't work like that. You don't just rock up here tomorrow and and just say, oh, three three fifty is going to happen. <laughs> it's, I've got different news for you guys. It's a it's a it's a ruthless format, and you got to go out and still work your arse off for it.